Our team is excited to have you with us this morning. The goal of today's training is to guide you through the required items necessary to fulfill NIFA's asset documentation requirements. As you know, our Welcome Home program does not require the submission of asset documentation, so this presentation applies only to the First Home program. Many of you have experienced receiving an email from our staff after a pre-closing package has been reviewed indicating the need for additional documentation or outstanding conditions. We hope this training session provides valuable information, leading you and your borrower to a clean and easy NIFA closing transaction. Let's get started. Did you know missing account statements are the number one file condition issued by the NIFA review team? It seems we're always looking for missing account statements. Our document validity period is 120 days, please. And we have a poll to launch. Stacy, if you'd be so kind. I will do that. I have launched that poll. There is one question to this poll. We'll leave this open for about 20 to 30 seconds or so, allowing people to answer those questions. And then we'll close that up. I see lots of responses coming in. Thank you. Getting some great responses in. All right, I think I'm going to close up that poll, Carrie. Okay. I'm going to end the poll, and I will share the results with those that particip are participating with us this morning. Thank you for responding. Um, I will stop sharing the results of that poll now and let Carrie give you the correct answer to the question. All right, so what documentation do we require? We're looking for checking account statements, savings account statements, health savings account statements, retirement or pension account statements, and investment account statements. So we need everything. And where does NIFA find mystery accounts? Well, of course, we're looking at your AUS findings and your ERLAs. We're looking at our household verification affidavit. We're looking at submitted pay stubs, tax returns or transcripts, and submitted account statements. And we have another poll to launch here. Okay, I'll get that, get that launched for folks. This poll has two questions in it. Um, how many months of checking and saving statements are required by NIFA? And when you submit those investment or retirement account statements, which ones do you submit? So we'll leave this one open again for, oh, 30 to 45 seconds, allowing people to participate. And then we'll do we'll do the same thing once we have enough participation in here. We'll end the poll and share the results, and then Carrie will give us all the right answers. And we do thank you for participating with the polls today. This is something new we're trying with our trainings just to help with participation. All right. I think I will go ahead and end that poll, Carrie. And now I will share the results of those. Uh, looks like we've had several interesting answers here. Uh, I will stop sharing the results of the poll and let you give us the right answers. All right. We need one month, the most recent month, please of checking account statements and savings account statements. And we're looking for the most recent health savings account statement, retirement or pension, 401k or investment statement. The reason we say most recent here for these particular ones is because we understand a lot of the times these are only printed quarterly and we will accept the most recent quarter.
So we're looking at assets shown on the AUS finding. This is where we find those. And we understand these accounts are what you're using for qualifying, but we need everything. So we just take note of these and make sure they're in the file. We're looking at assets shown on the ERLAs. So those shown in section 2A. Again, we understand these are only for qualifying. So we just take note and we look for them in the file along with any others. Assets shown on the household verification affidavit in the family assets section. We see a lot of these pages blank, which is disappointing to us. If you'd please help your borrowers complete these to the best of their ability, we would greatly appreciate that. Assets from pay stubs. We're looking to see where their payroll is being deposited, like checking your savings. And we're also looking for health savings and retirement account contributions. So you can see in this example, this particular borrower had a health savings account, a 401k and a Roth. We're looking at assets shown on submitted tax returns. On the first page is where you can find the capital gains and dividends. And on the signature page is where you can find the account that they're depositing their refund into. So we're looking for all of those. And we do have one more poll to launch here. Stacy, please. Perfect. So I am launching that. This poll has three questions to it. Uh, what items does NIFA look for when we're reviewing a file? That is a multiple choice question. Uh, how does NIFA calculate our interest income? with respect to the household income calculation. And then finally, if NIFA finds transfers on account statements, are the additional account statements required, yes or no? So here again, we'll leave this open for, oh, maybe 45, min 45 seconds to a minute, allowing people to participate and answer. Like Carrie said, this is something new we're trying. Uh, poll questions within our presentation, and we appreciate your participation. Like we're getting some good responses. Might let this sit a little bit. It looks like people are still answering. seconds. Again, thank you for your participation. There we go. Our numbers are climbing, Carrie. That's great. Okay. I think at this point, I will end that poll and share the results with our audience today. So you can see how people answered the questions. I know Carrie can't see these, so she'll tell us the right answers here in just a minute. So Carrie, I am going to stop sharing the poll and I'll let you take it from here. All right, thank you. So, during the review of the submitted asset statements, the NIFA team examines the statements for the following items. Reoccurring deposits like payroll um, and transfers between accounts, NIFA requires all borrower account statements. For the interest income calculation, interest income is calculated on assets totaling over 5,000 and converted to monthly income using the HUD imputed rate of 0.06%. So that's what we're looking for when we're reviewing those asset statements. So now I'm just gonna do a short little demonstration on the NIFA income worksheet using my pretend accounts. So on the income worksheet, you're looking for the borrower tab and you'll scroll down to the depository name section. This is the asset section. And let's see, I have a Pinnacle Jeepers Bank checking that has, let's say 2000 in it. 
a Pinnacle Bank savings that has $5,000 in it, a 401k that has 20,000, a health savings that has 2,500, and Edward Jones that has 5,000, and a Robin Hood that has 2,000. So we need all those. So as you can see, once you plug in your account balances, your total yearly income um, calculates that HUD imputed rate. So this would only add $21.90 to my yearly income. We get asked a lot about large 401ks or, or retirement statements. So let's just say if you had a borrower with a really large 401k, let's just plug in $500,000 here. That would only add, with all those others, that would only add $321.90 to that borrower's yearly income. So your borrower has to really be towing the line on that income calculation in order for their assets to throw them over out of our first home program. Does anyone have any questions about this before I continue? All right, no questions. Well, here are some frequently asked questions. We get, we get asked all the time. Are verifications of deposit allowed? No, account statements are required for all deposit accounts. We do have an exception though. NIFA will accept a VOD for certificates of deposit. We understand we don't, they don't always get statements for those. So we will accept a, a VOD for certific certificates of deposit. Does NIFA use interest rates or APY on the income worksheet? NIFA will use the APY for checking and savings accounts if it's listed on the account statement. NIFA will not use APYs for 401k statements due to the variability in the APY. Does NIFA accept screenshots in lieu of asset statements? NIFA only accepts screenshots if they list the borrower's name, institution name, account numbers, and balance. So please make sure that information is complete on the screenshot if your borrower doesn't get an asset statement. Um, I'm trying to think here, I can't think of an example, but some of those online only institutions it's difficult to get statements from, so we will accept screenshots. What if NIFA issues a condition for an account not belonging to the borrower or of the non-borrowing spouse? NIFA will accept a signed LOX from the borrower or non-borrowing spouse stating that is not their account. So if we see a transfer on a borrower's statement and we condition for that statement, um, just know that if that was a transfer from their mom or their grandma or whoever, we do not want mom or grandma's account statement. So your borrower can do a simple LOX that mom transferred me money and that is not my account. Harry? Yes. On those LOXs, does the borrower need to sign those? Will we accept an email? The answer is twofold. If you're doing a written LOX, the borrower must sign and it can be DocuSigned or we will also accept an email from your borrower um, to you, but please have them use the email address that's listed on the ERLA so we can tie that email to your borrower. Thank you, Stacy. Why does NIFA ask for an explanation of deposit for Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, et cetera, deposits or transfers? NIFA must verify that the borrower does not have additional employment. Um, sometimes it's pretty clear if they're really low amounts that the borrower is just getting paid back from friends or you know what have you using Venmo or Zelle. But sometimes we see rather large deposits for those. So we have to ask um, what those are because it looks like additional employment. What is NIFA's policy on verification of large deposits? This is a trick question. 
NIFA does not have a set policy, but if the reviewer cannot tie deposits to payroll or a gift letter, we may ask for an explanation of deposit. So it's up to viewer, uh, reviewer's discretion on these. We used to have um, a policy that said we would ask for um, LOXs for any deposit over 500. We've gotten rid of that policy. So again, if the reviewer cannot tie deposits to payroll or a gift letter, we may ask for an explanation of deposit. Any additional questions at this time? I hope this information was helpful today. We know assets are a little bit tricky for our program because we do ask for lots more than what you're used to getting just for underwriting purposes. And they do prompt some questions. 